still lots of questions in these scenarios. We've been reporting on these threats made to schools in the Houston area and really all over the country. And just this week, we've counted five in the Houston area. It not only disrupts learning time, but it also impacts parents and students' mental health. Here to tell us why these violent threats are rising is Mac Hardy with the National Association of School Resource Officers. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so tell us first about your organization um, and, and sort of what you all do. We're a training organization. Um, we're nationwide. We, we train um, police officers and administrators in school safety across the country. And um, we've made an impact and we've had been very, um, been very busy this year. Yeah. Uh, so um, we also have a membership um, opportunities so they receive updates on school safety and the newest trends in school safety. Mm. Tell us what is your opinion on why these threats are increasing recently across the country? Well, I think that, you know, students, you know, the amount of time they spend on social media, they're seeing, um, they're hearing and seeing all about these school shootings and that occurred in Georgia and there was one in Ohio. Um, and, you know, it's, it's on their minds. And, and why a child in the adolescent brain development does something, you know, we've all asked our child, you know, why did you do that? And they look at you and say, well, I don't know. And that's probably a truthful answer because sometimes they act before they think. So that's why it's so important that we communicate with our students in the schools and at home. It needs to start at home with the parents communicating their students that there are consequences of this and it's not the right thing to do. And they then, then they have it in their mind. So they may not do this before they think about it. Yeah. And and then, you know, I, I my child goes to one of these schools that received one of these threats and today they're not allowed to take backpacks to school. Everything has to come in a clear plastic bag. They said, don't bring your computer. Um, and so as I'm trying to talk with my eighth grade son about, you know, school tomorrow, I think kids of this age right now with so many threats, they're way desensitized to it. So I wanted to talk about the emotional impacts um, there. We obviously know it's disrupting classroom time, but sort of how to talk to your kids in the the era of we hear these threats every single week so they're not thinking that this is something that could actually happen and I think that's wonderful that is great and we need to talk to our students and know that school is a safe place and for many many students across this entire country the school is the safest place for them it's not in their homes or in their communities it's in the classroom and inside their school building and school for them you know is a safe place and we do hear about a shooting and that's it horrible we um you know we, our skin crawls every time we hear about it but we need to make sure that our students feel secure, that they they understand that there are trusting adults inside the school that are doing everything possible to make sure that their learning environment is safe. And we also know that when students feel safe and staff feel safe, then the learning environment is much more productive. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on open door policies? Should classrooms be open or should they have locked doors during school hours? Well, we've been teaching um, in our in our courses um, that doors need to be locked and they need to be shut. Because in the case of a um, incident inside the school, whether it be an active shooter or any other type of violence, a teacher has, you know, 15, 20, 30 students inside a classroom, that's that, stu that's that teacher's responsibility. This is the safety of those children. And you know, when, they, when they're trying to get those students calm and get them to a safe place, and then they also have to get up and go lock the door, or pull the door shut, or even in some cases lock it, um, you know, that's, that's seconds and seconds count. And we understand that across the nation um, that we haven't had a student killed behind a locked door. Yeah, and, and we're, I don't know, we're asking you that question, Matt Carty, because here locally, the largest district in the state has a new policy that teachers are not allowed to close their doors. It's an open door classroom policy that was put into place for learning. Um, and so now a lot of parents are concerned about that. Do you know, um, in, in your position as or head of the school resource officer group, how many other districts across the state require teachers to keep doors open during the day? Well, I, I don't know the number, but um across you know the country or across your state but you know it, it, one positive thing is that they are required to keep their doors in a locked position mm -hmm. when they're shut and that um you know i'd rather the doors be shut and school and safety is not convenient i'm sorry it's not a convenient thing it's a lot easier to unlock a door to enter a classroom 
than to you know to get a door closed in the case of an emergency or a, um, in, you know some type of violent event inside your school. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would suggest that parents, teachers need to do in order to prevent an issue like this? Communicate, not only with your students, but most importantly, your students, but communicate with your uh, police departments, your law enforcement agencies, your school security, um, your administrators in your school. And if you and if you if you ask your students how it's going, and if you feel uncomfortable that they may be bullied or there's something's going on inside the school, then you know talk to the administrator, talk to the counselor, encourage your student to talk to that counselor or to the trusted adult inside the building that they enjoy being around and enjoy communicating with. Um, and you know it's important that every student inside of a school has a trusted adult. Yeah, uh, really good advice. Yesterday we had a, um, a former Secret Service agent and someone who works with schools also um, on our show. And, and he was saying to you know, remind your kids that in a situation where something may be happening in your school, it's OK. Let your child know that it's OK to take the action that they need to take to be safe, to protect themselves, that a lot of times kids may be following rules or policies yeah. and that can be deadly in that moment. What, what do you think about that? I think that's great advice. We have to we have to let young people know that it's okay to protect themselves. It's okay to take the action that's necessary to keep themselves safe and to keep others safe. Um, and that is something that unfortunately, well, I don't know if it's unfortunate, maybe fortunate. We have to talk to our students about because we teach them to do certain things during the day. And if you don't do these things, then you're breaking rules. And in a situation like this, we need to make sure that they understand they can take action to protect themselves. If, it, if they're by an open door and it's, you know, they can run and they know it's safe and they can run and to get away from the situation, by all means do that. Um, and, you know, in Sandy Hook, that's what the teacher had them do. She had her students yeah. at, in the second classroom run and they did but they followed the rules they didn't run straight yeah. across the parking lot they ran down the sidewalk directly in front of the classroom but luckily they they were those students in that situation remained safe all right matt cardy thank you so much for joining us this morning and weighing in on this issue important to so many parents and teachers yeah. this morning we appreciate it